Hey guys, Jared Duckett, Duckett Lad CPAs and Advisors, and I hope you guys are doing well. I want to jump on here real quick and shoot a quick video regarding the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, also known as the EIDL or the Section B loan you guys are hearing through the SBA. Now this is different than the Section A loan that has recently came out through the CARES Act, the Payroll Protection Program. This is a separate loan. There's two different ones. What I want to talk about today is Section uh, 7B. The economic injury disaster loan. So real quick, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go over just a couple of details about it um, just to give a little insight into it. So first off, it is under Section 7B of the SBA and what it does is it provides small businesses with working capital loans of up to two million dollars, that's the ceiling, to help overcome the temporary loss of revenue. So the question is who's eligible? Basically, businesses with no more than 500 employees, but also individuals who operate as a sole proprietorship um, with or without employees or as an independent contractor. Now, this is key right here. So this loan, the 7B loan, this is only available through the SBA website. You don't go to your local lender, um, SBA lender, and get this. That's the 7A. The 7B is specifically through the website. And here's the link right here to go directly to the application. Um, this does this loan is made to a credit worthy business. So the credit score of the applicant um, is the primary factor in the approval of this. Um, the application is, is fairly straightforward. You know, one thing you will need to know um, is basically gross revenues and, and cost of goods sold for the business for the 12 months prior to 131.20. So basically a rolling 12 months looking back. Um, SBA, they will determine the amount of the loan. I'm not exactly sure how they're gonna do that, but they will determine the amount of the loan. Um, but it does have you know, pretty favorable terms. So it's got a 3.75% interest rate, up to 30 year repayment, but then also 12 months at the beginning of no payments. So very beneficial terms there. So one interesting part of this, this 7B loan is you can basically request an emergency grant of up to $10,000, which the SBA must provide with, within three business days of that request. So when you're going through that application, there's a spot that you check to basically request that emergency grant. The thing about the grant is it, it will not have to be repaid even if you are not approved for the loan. Okay, so if you get denied, you'll still be able to keep that 10,000 bucks. Uh, if you get it. Um, that $10 billion, uh, the government has basically set that $10 billion specifically aside for that grant program of which they're given the $10,000 grants, but it's a first come first serve basis. And then this is a real key one. So if you've already applied for this EIDL loan, if you already know about it and you already applied for it, if you did that before the grant was available, which I think today is the 30th of March, I believe if you applied for it last week, not 100%, but I think if you applied for it last week, that grant wasn't available. So very key, if you applied last week, go back and request that grant, okay? You don't have to reapply. You just have to go back and request that grant um, so you can become eligible for that. So once the SBA determines the amount, um, you know, the total proceeds, those proceeds are, are available to pay for expenses that could have been met had the disaster not occurred. Okay, and I, I guess I should preface this. This is an economic injury disaster loan, so only available in, dis in declared disaster areas, but all 50 states due to the coronavirus is a disaster area. But then also the you know, payroll and other operating expenses, that's what the proceeds can be used for. Um, one here, there's no personal guarantee on this loan, on loans up to 200,000. Over 200,000, there will be a personal guarantee um, and, and again, every business is different. So I want to disclaim this. I don't know everybody's business, but a lot of people, a lot of dental practices, they're applying for this loan before you apply for that 7A loan. You know, the 7A loan, again, is under the Payroll Protection Program in the CARES Act. A lot of people are applying for the 7B before because then when you go get the 7A loan through the SBA lender, Okay, you can possibly roll this 7B, this EIDL loan, into that 7A loan. But you can't double dip, right? 
So you can't use the proceeds for the same purpose. So now I want to disclaim this again. This is not, I'm not saying every dental practice out there now go take on debt because I don't know your exact situation. I don't want you just to go get debt and pour into your business. This is a great way to access debt, very favorable terms, but you need to get with your tax, you know, tax professional, look at your business to make sure this is the right move. A lot of people are getting these seven B loans. And then when the seven A is available, it's not available yet as of 3.30, you can't apply for that, but you can roll, possibly roll that seven B into the seven A. So if you guys have questions, let me know. Again, it's, I think there's a lot of confusion out there. You got 7A, 7B, what is what? Um, the 7B we just talked about, that is not a forgivable loan, okay? That is has to be repaid, but if you possibly roll that 7B into the 7A, then a portion of the 7A can possibly be forgiven. Very confusing. Again, that's the 7B loan. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. We're here to help. Thanks, guys.